Hey, what up, guys? I wanted to do a review for a movie I just checked out the other night, and that's Scream Factory's release of Valentine. And uh, I had I had seen this a long time ago. I ended up finding the DVD for like a dollar at a pawn shop or whatever, and I always enjoyed it. I never saw it in theaters, but I always thought, you know, it'd be cool if it came to Blu-ray. Now, uh, I'm stoked on this release, but I reserve myself to only because I did watch it, and it is an underrated slasher. But is it worth $27? That's a hard no. Um, but I still think it's really underrated. Like, if this was dropped to uh, 22 even 23 it'd be more. I would definitely say pick it up. So I'd definitely wait for a little sale or something. Or if it dips down on Amazon in price, definitely snag, snatch it up. But for, like, 26 27 bucks, it's definitely it's pushing it. Because the movie, nothing really new. It's, it's definitely, there's a lot of throwbacks to Scream. I mean, it is a post scream slasher and it's from the director of urban legend. I prefer urban legend, but I love the look of the killer in this, like that mask there. It's like a baby cherub mask. Uh, I really dug the look of the killer. I think the kills are badass. There's a hot tub scene in particular where Denise Richards looks amazing. She's like in this hot tub and he puts the cover over. It's like a vinyl plastic cover and he's just drilling holes through it until he hits her. And there's some other cool kills in it. And it's uh, kind of unusual too because everyone, it's like a group of women and then every dude that's kind of introduced into the scene is just really creepy. Like there's this dude, Jason, I think his name was, who you first meet with Katherine Heigl. And that's another like screen throwback with, deal with Katherine Heigl. If, you, if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to give anything away in case you haven't seen it, but it's a scream moment for sure. Um, but that dude's creepy. So you're like, oh, is that the killer? And then you're introduced to uh, some other people, wonder if they're the killers. And then uh, David, whatever his name is, uh, Baranis from, I think he's in Bones and stuff. You know, he's introduced here like, oh, is he the killer? So there's a lot of red herrings and stuff. And uh, because the general story is this kid was picked on by all these girls. And uh, one girl ended up lying, saying he like almost like sexually assaulted her or something. And he ends up getting arrested and all that. So it's like 20 years later or something. And all the girls that picked on him are dying. And they're trying to figure out, you know, the kid could have plastic surgery. And he could be any one of these dudes that are hitting on us or whatever so it was uh it's definitely a cool story i thought the killer was cool looking but it's nothing new it's a retread of a lot of old stuff um it's really more or less if you like want to beef out your slasher collection you have a really good edition of it now uh like i said the killer's worth the pickup alone i would say um there's a f it takes a long time between each kill that's another problem i had with it is it's just too much time in between each kill they need to, to do them more close together amp it up a little bit and there's no nudity whatsoever and for a movie like this and with all these women in it it's just bizarre to me not to have that and this ain't even pg-13 so i don't know what the hell they were thinking with that but uh yeah there's not really much more i could say without giving anything away performances were mediocre to good uh, there's some that are unbelievable, but there's some that are good. I mean, there's some che early 2000s cheesiness, like, this is from 01, so you get a lot of that, like, new metal music, like, almost, like, sounds like Godsmack or someone did the soundtrack or something. So you get a lot of stuff like that that's kind of just cheesy now and didn't date, it hasn't dated well, but if you like Urban Legend and post anything in the 2000s, late 90s slashers, definitely give this a try, because it's definitely worth your time. Uh, the transfer looked okay. It didn't blow me away. It says a new 2K scan of the original film elements. Like, there wasn't any problems with it, but there was not a single scene where I was like, oh, wow, that looks good. And usually with all these movies I watch, there's usually at least a few scenes you could point out and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. But nothing about this really blew me away. I thought the audio was kind of badly done, too. Like, uh... It wasn't even that the sound effects were loud and the voices were soft, it's just everything was soft. Yeah, I had to turn everything up on my TV to really hear what was going on. So I wasn't a big fan of that, especially for the price tag they have you kind of buying this app. But you get a brand new audio commentary with director Jamie Blanks, and it's moderated with Don Cossarelli, which is super bizarre to me. Um, new interviews with some of the actors, uh, new interviews with the co-writers, uh, then the vintage cast and crew interviews and uh, and uh, theatrical trailer. So it does have a decent amount of features. Um, now that's the reverse cover you get right there. The original art, which I kind of dig too. And I think the work they did on this updated art is actually really good looking. I'm glad I got the 
slip cover on this one. I don't know who did the art to this. I think it's Devin Whitehead, but I could be wrong on that. It looks like art by him, but anyways, yeah, that new cover I think is really badass. It fits the movie good, but uh, anyways, guys, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.